Hey there, do you want to learn how to convert this into this? If yes, then you are at the right place because I'm going to be teaching you the secrets and techniques of achieving photorealistic and cinematic renders in Blender. We're going to go over the basics of lighting and texturing so you can take your Blender skills to a whole new level. Now I will show you the real process of a 3D artist because we will solve all the problems and make all the creative decisions together in real time. So what are you waiting for? Let's start this class today and take your Blender skills to a whole new level. Thank you. Alright guys, so we are inside Blender 3D and here we're going to be making that amazing um, render. So first of all, we're going to be getting the 3D model which we need and for that I'm going to go to Google and I just uh, searched car 3D model and I found one on CG Trader. It's, uh, it's completely free and um, yeah, so uh, the one which I found, yeah, this one is nice. Okay. Yeah, so this 3D model looks pretty realistic and it's pretty detailed and it's pretty nice. So yeah, you can just uh, choose any of these 3D models. Uh, either you can pick a free one or you can uh, click this cross right here and you can see these uh, paid ones. Paid ones are obviously going to be more realistic and better than uh, the ones which are free. However, um, you have to pay for them. Yeah, that's the disadvantage. So um, I'm just going to download this one because it's um, it's, pre it's pretty realistic and it's, um, and it's free as well. So yeah, just free download and so a lot of new 3D artists think that they should create every single 3D model by themselves. And honestly, I am against that. I believe that we should be using these tools because these tools are for artists like us. Uh, countless websites, for example, like uh, Sketchfab, TurboSquared, uh, free, free 3D, CG Trader, and like a lot of these websites. These, the reason why these exist is because um, is for us to uh, for us 3D artists to use. And we should definitely use these um, uh, platforms and we should uh, save our time. So yeah, anyways. Um, so I'm gonna download this FPX version. Just download, and it's gonna start downloading. That's great. And so now we have the 3D model right here. And so we are gonna be dragging this. We are gonna be importing this in Blender. So I'm gonna go to Blender and File, Import, and we're gonna be importing this FPX. I'm gonna go to Desktop, and this is our FPX. So I'm just gonna import it. And we're gonna wait for it to import. Let's see. And okay, so it gives us an error. And it says that version 6000 is not supported, uh, is unsupported, must be 7100 or later. Uh, and yeah, I knew this was gonna happen and I, I just wanted to show you that some 3D models are gonna give you this error because uh, they are a they are of an older version and Blender does not support that. So the thing is, I'm going to be using Cinema 4D to convert uh, these materials, uh, these um, uh, this FPX file into a newer version. So I'm just going to open Cinema 4D. Now, obviously, you uh, obviously you won't have Cinema 4D if you're not uh, a Cinema 4D user. Uh, and if you don't have Cinema 4D, then don't worry because I'm going to be uh, attaching this uh, the upgraded version of this 3D model in uh, in the project section of this class. So you can just download it and use it. But yeah, for now, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, upgrade this version uh, of this FPX and I'm going to be back. And okay, so I have this upgraded FPX and I'm going to be importing this one. So import FPX and desktop and upgrade it. And now it should in theory, up, uh, it just import it normally. Let's see if it does. And okay, so we have our car um, imported. And so now we're gonna be starting with creating the scene. And, <clears throat> and so for that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make sure that the, uh, this cursor is exactly on the, on the bottom, okay? So I'm just gonna be uh, going to the side view and I'm gonna press this cursor, bu cursor button right here and I'm gonna drag this over. Actually, I'm gonna drag it just below this tire so that we ha we get our plane where it should be. Something like that should be nice. And now I'm gonna uh, press add, mesh and plane. Now you're gonna see that we get the plane in exactly that um, uh, in, in where, the, where the cursor was, okay? So I'm just gonna be uh, going to the scale tool and, and we're gonna be scaling it up. Something like that should do, and we're going to be moving it as well. So I think maybe something like that should be good. Yeah, that seems to be nice. So I'm just going to save the project, and I uh, I am 
um, recommending you guys to save your projects as well because I don't want you to lose your progress. So we're gonna be, um, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna delete the Cinema 4D edit thing. I don't know why it was here. Uh, anyway, so I'm just gonna name this uh, the floor. And you should name your um, everything in your project so that you uh, do not get lost and you don't you do not get confused. Anyway, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift D uh, to duplicate this, and I can move it anywhere you want. However, I'm going to press I'm going to right click to reset the position so that it goes back where it was. And now I'm going to move uh, use the Move tool to move it back, move the duplicated plane back, and I am going to uh, use the Rotate tool to rotate it. Just press Control to rotate it in increments of five, and we're going to be rotating it, rotating it 90 degrees, something like that. And I'm going to move it up, and we're going to be doing the same thing. Just Shift D, right click, and we're going to be moving it once again, something like that, and rotate it in increments of five, rotate it 90 degrees, and we're going to be uh, moving it a little back. So this is just I'm just creating the scene, and okay. So to save your project and yeah so now one thing which i'm going to do is uh, uh this i'm going to move it a little back nope that's way too much or actually i'm just going to scale it up yeah something like that should do something like that will be our frame and right now it looks absolutely trash. So uh, yeah first of all uh, we're going to be lighting the scene and then we're going to be adding uh, the materials and the textures anyways so what i'm going to do to add the lights is i'm going to add mesh and we're going to be adding a you guessed it cylinder now the reason why i added a cylinder is because we're going to be using top lighting for this and it's a very common technique top lighting and usually uh, cars are lit using this way so i'm just gonna increase the scale make it this big something like that make it uh, just move it a little up yeah, that works. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be uh, giving this uh, cylinder a material which is going to be emissive and it's going to light the whole scene. So the way we're going to be doing that is by, uh, first of all, we're going to be going to the materials, materials section with our cylinder selected. And we are going to be pressing this new button right here. And it's going to give this whole um, cylinder a material. And now if I, uh, and now if I go to this um, uh, look dev mode, you're going to see that if I change the color of the texture, it's gonna change so that basically this uh, this texture is applied to the whole cylinder but we want a an emissive material applied only to the bottom of this cylinder okay and the way we do that is by going to the edit mode and we're gonna be uh, going to this face select mode or you can alternatively press 3 on your keyboard and we're gonna be selecting this face and we're gonna be adding pressing this plus button right here we're gonna be creating a new material by pressing this new and we're gonna be pressing this assign button here now what this is gonna do is that uh, the rest of the cylinder has this pink material and this uh, the only the bottom has this white material so now if I change it to green and if I go back to object mode you're gonna see that uh, the, these two uh, areas have different materials and that's it, that's exactly what we want so first of all I'm gonna go to this pink material and I'm gonna name it and I'm gonna name it um, uh, light body this is gonna be the body of the light and I'm gonna reduce the saturation basically make it white and I'm gonna make it darker, something like that should do. And then we're gonna be selecting this new uh, second material, the green one. I'm gonna be naming it light emissive. Okay, uh, I don't know if I spelled emissive right. <laughs> I honestly don't care. Uh, I'm just gonna make uh, the color white as well. And we are going to be going down. And in this emission, we're gonna be pressing this black right here, and we're gonna be increasing it to white. That is amazing. And now you're gonna see that the scene is being lit using that um, emissive, but it doesn't look realistic at all. It looks very, very bad. And now we're gonna be going to this uh, rendered mode so that we can uh, take a look at what it's doing. And now, right now, nothing is happening. The car is not actually being lit by this um, uh, the cylinder. And the reason for that is because we are inside this EV render engine. And if I change this to cycles, you're gonna see that this looks amazing, doesn't it? And uh, it looks pretty realistic and uh, the whole scene is being lit by that um, uh, cylinder. So I'm gonna go back to object mode and now we have our, um, uh, what do you call it? This light uh, lighting setup is ready. 
and now we can just set up our camera and start adding materials so I'm gonna go to add and I'm gonna add a camera and in this camera uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna first of all press this button right here to toggle the camera view and now I'm looking at the world from uh, the eye of the camera and I'm gonna press this little button right here if I press it you're gonna see that this is gonna open this menu and I'm gonna go to view and then in this view I'm gonna press this button right here lock camera to view now what this does is basically if I move my view right now you're gonna see that I just get out of the camera and if I go back to the camera and now if I press um, uh, this button camera to view now if I move my camera move my um, view you're gonna see that it's uh, it's it's basically moving the camera isn't it and that is exactly what we want so I'm just gonna uh, close this and you're gonna see that we have our camera and we can position it the way we want perfect so I just want it to be positioned something like that and we can we can mess around with the camera settings so for example the focal length uh, I want it to be something like uh, maybe something like that because I want it to have a very natural and realistic feel and yeah that is looking pretty good so I'm gonna I'm just gonna um just give me a second I'm just gonna position the camera something like that should work okay yeah that's perfect okay so now I'm gonna go to the rendered view and we're gonna see uh, if it looks good in this as well and it certainly does look good so I am going to go back to this uh, viewport shading and we are going to be now what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be starting with our material so i'm going to go to look dev mode uh, because we can see the materials here and yeah okay so i'm going to start with the body material here okay so i'm just going to select the body and if i go to the materials you're going to see that this has this default material applied and what i'm going to do is i am going to actually change the color of this to see which uh, which uh, which things have this material applied and right now if i change this color you're going to see that everything basically had this has this material applied and so what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm just going to give it a red color and I'm going to name I'm just going to name it body okay so body and I'm just going to get uh, actually I'm just going to go to that uh, menu and I'm going to turn this off so I'm going to unlock it so that if I um, say move my camera just give me a second let me just close this yeah so now if I move my um, view you're going to see that this is uh, I'm getting out of the camera and yeah that's exactly what I want so uh, now uh, what ha what has happened is that the whole car has the same material and that is not something we want so uh, what we're gonna do is that first of all we're gonna be uh, like shading this material and we're gonna be finishing the body texture and then we're gonna be removing it from the other things which we do not want to have uh, this body texture so yeah the color I'm gonna be using something like that a very deep uh, red something like that and I'm gonna make it I'm gonna, I'm gonna reduce the roughness do something like that uh, let's just go to the rendered mode it looks amazing doesn't it yeah it looks amazing already <laughs> the good thing about uh, the good thing about blender is that it's so realistic already that you don't even have to do that much effort and it looks and it looks good like from the default so yeah uh, we are I'm gonna be tweaking this material a little more so what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be uh, reducing the sheen tint a little bit actually that doesn't matter uh, that much um, we're gonna be messing around with the roughness a little bit so I'm just gonna give it a little bit roughness and the specular we could increase actually I'm just gonna go to this rendered mode and let's see how this specular looks and that's one and if I reduce it that is 0.5 let's change it to one and yeah one more tip which I'd like to give you is that if I go back to the viewport and if I uh, if we go to this uh, this settings right here and if we go to the denoising panel denoising tab and if we turn on this viewport denoising, what's going to happen is that we're not going to get that noise anymore, and it's going to look uh, slightly weird at first, yes, but it's going to uh, but it's going to look much better than it did previously. And uh, this is actually a game changer, especially if you have a an Nvidia Nvidia graphics card uh, that's going to look uh, amazing and it's going to be very fast. However, I do not have an Nvidia graphics card, so it is not that useful for me. But if you uh, have an NVIDIA graphic card then I would definitely recommend you to use this viewport denoising uh, thing yeah so I'm just gonna save the project once again and we are going to be uh, going to the look dev mode and I think that looks good okay so now what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be giving the other things the material which they need and so let's start with the tires 
because honestly seeing red tires makes my eyes hurt <laughs> and i'm just gonna select the, uh, select the tires and i'm gonna go to the material tab and we're gonna be pressing this minus button right here now what this is gonna do is that this is gonna remove that material so because we don't want the body material applied to the tire right uh we're just gonna press that and we're, you're gonna see that this tire has no material right now so i'm just gonna press new i'm just gonna name it tire Naming your materials is very, very important because you want to have your um, your whole scene very organized and very nice. And yeah, that's just the way it is. Okay, so I'm just going to make it darker because guess what? Tires are dark. Uh, let's go to viewport. That looks pretty much like a tire, doesn't it? Let's actually make it a little dark, more dark. Yeah, that works. Anyway, so now let's uh, apply this tire material to all the tires. And I'm just gonna go to the this side and I'm gonna select this tire. We're gonna go to the material tab and press minus. And instead of creating a new material and doing the whole thing say, uh, all over again, I'm just gonna press this button right here and it's gonna show me all the materials which I have created. Now you're gonna see we have the body material, we have the tire material, we have the light body, light emissive, everything basically which we have created. So I'm just gonna select the tire material and you're gonna see it automatically applies it. I'm just gonna select the black tire as well, minus this and tire, amazing. I'm just going to do the same with this and that is the way you do it. So we have our uh, materials applied to the tires but we still have a long way to go. Now let's create this uh, chrome metal finish look uh, which we uh, chrome metal finish material which we uh, are going to be applying to this and many other things as well. So I'm just going to do the same thing just press minus and I'm going to create a new material and this one we're going to be giving it a gray texture and we are going to be increasing the metallic okay. We're going to be increasing the metallic and we're going to be increasing the specular and we're going to be reducing the roughness okay so now if i go to this um rendered mode you're going to see that it is a little too dark so i'm just going to make it a little brighter a little more and we want it to be very shiny um and it should have like some roughness but not a lot Specular, I'm, I'm going to try to reduce it. Metallic, you're going to see that without the metallic, it looks fake, and we must have the metallic. And I think that looks good. Let's go to the camera and let's see how it looks. And that metal material looks pretty, pretty realistic, so we're going to go back to the look dev mode. And now I'm just going get to out, get out of the camera and I'm going to be applying, uh, applying this to many other things as well. So this is going to be uh, minus and this is going to be, I think it was this material one. I'm just going to name it metal um, shiny <laughs> or something like that. I don't know. Anyways, so uh, yeah, let's apply it to these tires as well. This is just some repetitive stuff which we have to do, unfortunately. Uh, it, I know it's not very fun. <laughs> but it is what it is unfortunately okay so we're going to be applying this to this thing as well and this as well and this grill as well that are shiny and what else yeah this thing should be metallic And let's see what else we have. Okay, so we have this thing right here. This should be metallic as well. And that as well. Okay, so let's see what else. Yeah, so these things are also supposed to be metallic. Uh, metal shiny. Let's see how they look. It looks pretty good, actually, doesn't it? And this uh, these side mirrors I think we should give them a shiny look as well both of them uh, this one as well this grill okay so let's find other things which we are applying this um, metallic material as well uh, so I think that that's pretty much it yeah we do have uh, some things on the back so I'm just gonna be uh, applying them and this part should be very easy and I hope you understand this uh, if any of this is confusing, you can be sure to like um, uh, send me a text or you can leave a review down below and I will reply to that. 
and in the project section you can just uh, do this um, uh, create a card like this and you can uh, send it to me so I will be sure to help you and I will be sure to give you feedback and yeah just follow just follow along and I would recommend you to use a different car um, 3d model so that you're not blindly following my tutorial and you're doing something actually productive this has to be metallic as well this is just some basic repetitive boring stuff and now let's move on to uh, the you guessed it these uh, mirrors uh, the, the not the mirrors <laughs> the glass part okay so I'm gonna minus and we're gonna be adding a new material now this material I'm just gonna go back to my camera okay now this material is gonna be very special because it is gonna be is gonna have this transmission and I'm just gonna try to set the transmission to one and if I go to rendered mode you're gonna see that we let's see if we actually see through Right now it's very um, uh, dark and it's very, uh, it's, it's like frosted glass basically. And the reason for that is because first of all, we have this roughness, which we should not have. The roughness should be very low for, uh, for glass. And uh, oh, another thing which I'm gonna do is this base color is set to a gray value. It's not white. I'm just gonna set it to white, a something a little less than white, okay? Uh, because exactly white is gonna, uh, gonna look not, not that great. Okay, so that looks like uh, like gloss, isn't doesn't it? I'm gonna be applying the same material to these as well, these side ones, uh, and I'm gonna name this gloss. Okay, so just save your project once again because I don't want you to lose your amazing work. And so now one other thing which I'm gonna do is let's actually apply this uh, the gloss material to this as well like that uh, gloss and one one other thing which I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a leather material to this thing so just a second just let's just apply gloss material to this and now let's work on the leather material now the leather material is gonna be very very easy to create so we're just gonna be um, uh, creating a new material and I'm gonna name it leather what has happened to my typing skills uh, yeah I'm just gonna make it a dark red very dark red something like that and it kind of kind of already looks like metal uh, like uh, leather so I'm just gonna reduce the roughness a little bit uh, specular is gonna be gonna go down a little we do not need to make it metallic because it's not a metal uh, so something like that should do now this is personal preference if you feel like uh, your leather should be more shiny than mine then feel free to make your leather more shiny than mine but uh, yeah, so this is just personal preference. And okay, so our car is almost complete. Um, I'm just gonna uh, go back to our uh, viewport mode. So I'm gonna apply that same uh, leather material to this thing as well. Um, leather. And now let's see how our car looks. So our car should basically be completed by now. And I'm just gonna give it a full render. And we're gonna be adding uh, the the shiny, uh, not the shiny, the emissive materials to this uh, and this, these lights. Uh, and yeah, apart from that, I think we are good to go. So now before we add the light material, uh, we're gonna be working with the floor and these walls. So I found this material, uh, this texture online, which uh, I'm just gonna be showing you. This texture has this albedo. Uh, and this is the roughness map. Oh, sorry, the height map, and this is the uh, this is the normal map. Okay, so these uh, and this is the roughness map. Okay, so these uh, I'm gonna be using all these to create a realistic floor, and it's gonna look amazing. So yeah, let's start. So I'm just gonna be selecting this floor, and make sure you're in object mode, and we're gonna go to the shading tab. Okay, uh, and here what we're gonna be doing is that we are going to be uh, unzooming and. Why are we not seeing nodes? Yeah, the reason why we're not seeing nodes is because we have, don't even have a material. So I'm gonna go to the materials and we're gonna be adding a new material. And uh, I'm just gonna be dragging those in. So for example, uh, so I have those on my other desktop and I am going to be just dragging those from my desktop uh, over to this blender. And I'm just gonna be plugging it in. So this albedo, albedo means uh, color and we're gonna be plugging it into the base color. And next up we have this normal map and normal map, you can just directly plug this normal map in 
to Blender, you need to ha use a node, uh, which is called normal map. And uh, you just uh, open that by pressing shift A. So shift A, search and normal, uh, normal map. And I'm just gonna be pressing it, uh, placing it somewhere here. And we're gonna be taking this normal value and we're gonna be plugging it into the normal uh, of this material, of this um, principled BDF shader, BDSF shader, BD BSDF shader, my bad. And we're gonna be taking the color and we're gonna be plugging it into this uh, color, um, our normal map. Okay, so now you're gonna see that if we, if I zoom in, it's gonna look as if it's actually coming out. Now, if I remove this, this looks very flat, doesn't it? And now if I plug it in, you're gonna see a huge difference. You're gonna see it, it actually feels 3D. And yeah, that's what normal maps do. So I think that should be good enough. Uh, let me just go back to the layout mode and we're gonna be going to the rendered mode and we're gonna be see uh, we're, we're gonna see if it looks good or not. Uh, the roughness is way too high, so I'm gonna reduce the roughness, something like uh, that. Maybe a little higher, specular, I'm gonna reduce the specular. And one thing which I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to this uh, look dev mode and I'm gonna go to the cylinder uh, and in these materials, emissive material, I'm gonna reduce the um, ignore the child shouting in the background. I don't know, my neighbors are crazy. Uh, I'm just gonna be reducing this uh, emissive strength. Uh, I'm gonna be reducing this, um, something like that should look good. And we're gonna be applying the same material to the background, uh, to the walls. So I think it was, um, what was it called? Yeah, what do we name it? Let's name it um, walls and floor. I'm terrible with naming, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, you should be able to understand your names. And even if your names are terrible, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and yeah, that is great. Uh, so one thing which I'm gonna do is you're gonna see that uh, our world uh, world texture is actually not black. Uh, so if I go to this environment, uh, world properties, you're gonna see that this color is basically the color of the background, okay? And if I set it to white, you're gonna see this. And if I set it to black, you're gonna see that our uh, world is gonna be absolutely black. And that is exactly what we want because we want to have a very dark and high contrast feel. And yeah, so, okay. So next up, we're gonna be adding the, what do you call it? Uh, the light material, light material, okay? So I'm just gonna be selecting these lights and we are going to be going to the material tab and minus and uh, we're gonna be creating a new texture uh, actually, one thing which we can do is uh, instead of creating a new texture, we can just use that same uh, light emissive texture. And let's see if it looks good. Uh, it's way too light, so I'm gonna create a new one. Uh, yeah, new texture, and we are going uh, going to be going to the emission, make it white. Actually, not white. Let's make it a slight yellow, because this car is um, this car is yellow lights. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, that's way too yellow. A little less, something like that should work. And we're gonna be increasing the strength as well. Uh, that should do. Let's go to look dev mode and we are going to be applying the same material to this one as well. Uh, I think it was this one, material two. Let's name it like car, car headlamps. Uh, and we are going to be applying the same material to these backlights as well. This and let's apply and I'm just car headlamps and to this one as well. To this one and this one and this one. Okay, cool. And now let's render it and let's see how it looks. So we are basically done with the car and I hope you like it. And we're gonna be, we are gonna be adding bloom uh, in just a bit. Uh, so bloom is that glow which you see around uh, the uh, the car, and so one thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to change the body color to a little more bright, to be a little more bright, and I'm going to be increasing the emission strength back to one. We're going to be changing this to metallic. Yeah, that is what I was missing. Yeah, so we're going to be making it metallic because we want these uh, the, we want the floor to be meta uh, metal, <laughs> and the roughness. Let's increase the roughness a little bit. Let's reduce the specular. Something like that should do. That looks. Uh, that is looking pretty good. And 
let's add some fill filling lights okay now what filling lights are because uh you, you can see this area is very dark so we're gonna, we're gonna be adding an extra light in order to fill that area and so i'm just gonna add a light point light and we are going to be getting out of our camera and where is it yeah i'm just gonna turn these on and i am going to bring it down bring it forward just in front of the car something like that and i am going to go to these light properties and i'm going to increase the radius something like that and let's go to our camera and let's render it and let's see how uh, now uh, one thing immediately what i'm noticing is that it's way too bright so i'm going to reduce it to something like four yeah that uh no actually let's reduce it to something like that so we just want it to be slightly visible and yeah i think that looks pretty good doesn't it so yeah that is basically it guys we are done with the car and i am going to be reducing let's reduce the roughness a little bit because we wanted to have uh we wanted to um have more of these sharp reflection reflections and yeah let's go uh let's um uh, press this, lock this camera to view again so that we can um tweak our camera and let's go to look of mode and let's um set the camera to something like that i think that should look very dramatic and very um good something like that let's render it and by the way save your project if you haven't already and i'm going to be increasing the rough uh, this um power of this lamp a little bit not too much though just do what should be nice because we want the car to be visible as well right um and i'm going to be reducing the specular of this car let's see how metallic looks no that's terrible never mind <laughs> I did not do that. And I think that looks pretty good, doesn't it? So one thing which I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, set the world color color to be slightly bright because it's way too dark. Everything is just way too dark. Um yeah, that should do. I think it looks pretty real pre pretty realistic. And yeah, that's pretty much it for this guys. Now finally, let's render it and after rendering it, I'm going to show you how to add bloom. Uh, so yeah okay so just make sure that your render engine is cycles uh, duh I mean if it's not then well sad <laughs> uh, render the render samples uh, samples I'm gonna set it to something like say 300 because the more samples you have the less noise uh, you have and the, the more clearer and better your image looks and denoising we're gonna be uh, adding a render denoising and we're gonna be setting it to open image denoise and yeah let's actually set it to 200 because i think 200 should be good enough eh 300 <laughs> anyways so um yeah we can turn on adaptive sampling as well uh but i'm not going to turn that on because uh honestly i've never used it and i just don't want to experiment with this um tutorial and yeah so i'm just going to go to this rendered mode and in this color management you can set these uh, view transform modes right so if you set it to standard you're going to see that it's a little more uh, vibrant and filmic is a little more washed out filmic log is very very washed out raw is uh this thing whatever this is and false color is something irrelevant that is um not uh, uh something beginners should be worried about anyway so i'm just going to be setting it to standard and I'm going to be color grading it, it uh, color grading it anyway. Uh, so yeah, that should be my frame. And I'm just going to turn this on. Camera, make sure that I am in the camera. And let's render it one more time. And then we're going to be hitting render uh, once and for all, hopefully. <laughs> I think that should be good. Let's just move this a little up. Let's move it to the right. Because basically, I'm making this for the thumbnail, right? So I'm gonna ha I'm gonna have text right here, and uh, you guys can obviously use your own um, uh, whatever um, what do you call it? Whatever layout you want. But I'm gonna be writing text here, so uh, I, I'm just leaving the space, leaving some space. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. Uh, just go to render and render image. Three, two, one. Let's do this.
and let's hope <laughs> it doesn't crash or anything uh yeah so that uh, i think this turned out pretty good and i wasn't expecting it to turn out that great but yeah it is what it is anyway so i'm gonna be seeing you after it it, it has rendered all right guys so it has been some time and it has finished rendering so yeah here we have it and uh, i'm just gonna cross it out so to add the bloom what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be going to this compositing tab right here and in here what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be pressing this use nodes button and you're gonna see this node and you're gonna see this is our render okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna sh uh, press shift a to create a new node i'm gonna search viewer right so I'm just going to plug this image into the viewer. So you, you guessed it what's going to happen. Uh, it's just going to view this uh, image. So I'm just going to make this down and you're going to see this is our um, image, right? So uh, yeah, we have this backdrop anyways. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift A again and I'm going to create a node uh, which is going to be called glare. We're just going to search for glare and uh, there you go, glare. And I'm just going to hover over this line and I'm going to press this. Now this is going to uh, uh, add a glare node in, in the middle and hey notice this is looking absolutely terrible okay uh, and we're gonna be uh, so the reason for that is because um, it is set to streaks and streaks is, uh, is uh, adds this um, weird thing <laughs> it just looks bad uh, so what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be adding some fog glow okay and that is looking much much better okay and so we can just decrease the threshold uh, that's gonna make everything uh, glow uh, and that's not exactly what we want and we can reduce the size to control the glow uh, So I guess something like seven should be fine or maybe even six Yes, yeah, six seems to do the job just fine and Yeah, that's pretty much it. So what we're gonna be doing next is that we are going to be uh, Going to this rendering tab and you can see this uh, is set to render result That's why we're seeing the render result and uh, I'm just gonna press this and viewer node, we can set it to viewer node and it's gonna be showing us that uh, um, uh, the one which we just created uh, and it has this clear. Okay, so now to save this uh, image, what we're gonna be doing is that we're gonna be clicking this image button right here and we can press save as. Uh, now just save it whatever you want. I'm just gonna save it in this blender work. Uh, I'm just gonna name it car because why not? Uh, car SS for Skillshare. Um, save as image and we can go to this folder and car ss and there you go uh you have this car and uh, we can just crop it uh, from the side because i think we uh misframed it a, a little bit and it looks a little weird from the side so we can just crop it and yeah well i mean you know how to crop photos don't you uh so yeah if you're wondering what this is this is the reference which uh, uh which i created earlier uh so yeah it's pretty similar and I think this one turned out a little better because of the camera angle and stuff. This one looks too, uh, like it looks very, um, what do you call it? Very dull and dead. This one looks.